This here is acrylic gel medium. Anyone know what this is? This is going to be our magical friend while making acrylic gel transfers today. I'm gonna ask a really stupid question. What is paint? What is paint? That's absolutely right. All paint is two things, pigment and a vehicle or a binder. So the pigment is what gives it color. That could be ground up bugs, rocks, all sorts of things. Um, and that is consistent across different types of paint. So oil paint, watercolor, uh, acrylic paint, on and on. We are gonna focus in on acrylic paint because the binder for acrylic paint is a liquid plastic. It's a polymer. It's this stuff here, acrylic gel medium. For oil paint, it's oil linseed oil, walnut oil. Um, there's lots of different types of oils you could use. For watercolor, it's gum arabic. It's a water-soluble vehicle. For casing, it's milk. It's a type of milk binder. Uh, egg tempera, it's egg. But for our purpose here, this magical substance here, this polymer, this plastic, can do a really special thing with a basic print from the school printers, any sort of inkjet, laser print, it can take the ink from the print and it can mag magically absorb it into this substance here. And then what can happen is you can rub away the paper with water on the back and just have the print left on all sorts of different surfaces. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna dive into that step by step. So the first step is to get a print, an inkjet print. Step one is to find an image. So laser prints work great. Uncoated magazines work. If they have a coating on them, it's not going to work. I've heard that uh, inkjet doesn't work as well, but a lot of it's going to be trial and error. Newspapers can work as well. So I have printed these out at the SAIC laser printers. I'm gonna start off with this here. This is some roast beef. Step two is to get our acrylic gel medium. It can be glossy or it can be matte. That doesn't really matter. It's up to you. You can even mix some pigment in with it if you want it, some color, a little bit of color, not too much because it will become opaque, which means non-transparent. We wanna keep it transparent. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to get a little bit of paint here. Sorry about that. I'm gonna apply it to my image and I'm gonna try and keep it consistent. I'm gonna try and not have it to be, be too streaky. I'm gonna go with two different directions. Go back again. And you can see that it's white. When it dries, it'll be completely transparent. So I'm gonna let it dry and that should take about 20 minutes to an hour. You're gonna do one layer first on your image. Uh, that depends on, the drying time depends on how thick the paint is and then the air quality. The second thing I wanna do is I wanna really make sure that I clean my brushes that's really important when you're using acrylic paint, much more than with oil paint or with watercolor or gouache. With watercolor or gouache, you don't even have to wash your brushes. You could keep them. It's not going to ruin the brushes. With oil paint, it will eventually ruin the brushes. It'll mess them up, but you have a much longer time uh, before you have to wash your brushes. With acrylic paint, it's going to dry in 20 minutes to an hour, and then this brush will become ruined. So if you have a very nice, expensive brush, you're gonna completely ruin them. It's gonna become a big chunk of plastic. So you wanna wash that with uh, warm water and some soap in the sink. So the next step is I am going to find something to transfer this image onto. This uh, piece of beef and some sort of, I don't know what this is, like a, like a pot cooker, an insta cooker. I'm gonna transfer it onto this drawing here, this painting. It's kind of a painting that I was working on and I came to a stopping place a while ago 
installed. Um, so I'm gonna try to revitalize it by just throwing on this piece of beef and seeing what happens. Maybe I'll hate it, but maybe that hate will give me some clarity on next steps of what to do with this work because it has literally just been sitting forever. So I got a pencil and I marked off where I wanted to lay it at. Um, Another note about acrylic gel transfers is that you do not want to get any of the gel transfer onto the back because what we're going to do is we're going to put this down face first onto the surface that we're trying to transfer it onto. Try everything not to get acrylic gel medium onto the back of the image you're trying to transfer because it is going to dry plastic and you will not be able to remove the paper because we are putting it down face first onto what we're transferring, and then we're going to rub away the paper with water in our hands, and we'll have the image. Uh, that also means that the image will be flipped. Uh, it'll be mirror flipped. That's also something to think about if you're copying over text um, and whatnot. So just try everything in your power not to get some of this acrylic gel on the back. If you do, it's not a huge deal. So what I've done is I've marked off where I wanted to put where I want to put this piece of beef and then I am going to put on some acrylic gel medium onto my painting what I'm transferring it onto I'm going to do a thicker layer here uh, because I really, the worst thing is you put it on there and it doesn't transfer because it's not sticky enough, it doesn't adhere, it doesn't uh, get that surface to surface quality. So you want to put a good amount on this part of uh, this process, this step in the process. And that is also going to mean that it's going to take longer to dry. I, when I get to this step, the other steps are when they're facing the air and you're putting on a layer that's maybe like 20 minutes. This is gonna, I usually wait overnight for this. I'm gonna put another layer onto my image. Then I'm going to lay it down. I'm going to let go of it. Can you see that? You can't see that. Back it up a little bit. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean my hands because I don't want to get any acrylic gel medium onto the back of the sheet. And I'm going to work from the beginning here and I'm going to press out so that I don't get any air bubbles. Because wherever there's an air bubble, we won't have surface to surface contact and the image won't transfer. If you do want that sort of distorted look, you can go for that. Um, but I don't want that. So now I'm going out from the middle. I'm trying to push out any air bubbles. Uh, learn from my mistakes. Uh, my studio is pretty dirty. So there is a lot of dust and dirt. Uh, that will stick into the acrylic gel medium and you know maybe you're into that but if you're not then make sure you dust and sweep to get rid of all of that. I usually then towards the very end go out to the very edge and wipe it out and then clean my hands. And now we're just gonna let it dry. One last tip. Another thing that I like to do is to put a clean sheet of paper down onto my image. And then I like to get a weight and put that weight on top of here to really make sure that it's flat. Books are perfect weights. So I'm just gonna press that down, get another book. And then I'm going to wait until overnight. Hi everyone. So I have waited overnight so that my image could thoroughly dry. It was sandwiched uh, with a book to make sure that it was super flat. 
And now we're moving on to the next step where I am going to reveal the image by removing the paper. And I'm gonna do that with some good old fashioned elbow grease and warm water and my fingers. I prefer to use my fingers. You could use a sponge, uh, but I feel like I have more control because I work with my hands. I know my hands quite well. So what I'm going to do is I am using warm water. I'm gonna stick my fingers in and I'm gonna go over the paper. And I'm just gonna sort of get water all over it to sort of marinate it, saturate it. Um, I like to think about cooking, cooking shows when I'm doing these videos. This is the first demo video I've done. Um, I'm gonna do that so that it saturates the fibers of the paper. So I'm just gonna go all around the paper and I'm trying to stay on just the paper and not get on my drawing. Um, I'm not sure if it'll mess it up, but I just don't want to risk it. So I'm going through, I'm soaking it. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to find a spot, a certain spot. I'm just going to start working it. What I'm doing is I'm rubbing back and forth my fingers, rubbing, rubbing, rubbing. And you can see that it's already starting to remove the paper. I'm going to go back quite often and get more water. Water is your friend. And this takes a long time. The process is quite slow. And my biggest advice is going to be, you need to figure out the right pressure. You need to press hard enough where it's going to start to push through the paper and remove the paper. But you, won't, you don't want to press so hard. If you press too hard, you will pull up the image. If you've put in enough layers of acrylic gel medium onto your image, like I did two layers, two or three layers before, that shouldn't be a problem. Um, and if they're thoroughly dry, that shouldn't be a problem. But you don't want to press too hard. And I can already see, I can already see the meat starting to show that might not come through on the camera. And this is going to take a while. So I'm just going to keep doing this until I start to review, reveal the image. So here is the first go of removing the paper. I had to take it over the trash can for a little bit. I did use a little bit of a rag at one point also to rub it off because it gets a little bit like paper pulp gluey just to remove that. And this is what it is looking like. You can see a little bit of ground beef. It's also uh, somewhat transparent, which can be sort of interesting. We have these fat, this sort of fat floating over this weird restaurant scene with this dude here. So I've gone back a few times to remove the paper. And the last step I would do is put another coat of acrylic gel medium on. And that'll kind of take away, if you don't do that, it can have a little bit of a, of a white papery finish, which can be not so nice. So putting on that pretty much a varnish, an acrylic varnish, the last layer of acrylic gel medium, it's going to, it's going to keep it clear and not um, white and foggy. The other thing I do sometimes is I go back with a little bit of paint and I will bring out some elements. Like I'll darken it here. I'll sort of start to copy it with paint really subtly if I want to sort of intensify the image. I like how it's transparent. Like there is this weird door here. I might go and start to draw that out and bring that out and play with the transparency. So that is it. We have successfully transferred a piece of weird raw beef. Successfully transferred a piece of weird raw beef onto this work in progress. And I hope, and I hope that has been helpful.